Every day when you're waking up, when you're working out, or if you just need a mental boost, download Mindset to start your day right. If somebody comes up to me and says, I can't stop drinking, can you help me? I can say yes and follow up and do it. That's the best thing. And I've said this for a long time, when I die, I don't want friends to be the first thing that's mentioned. I want that to be the first thing that's mentioned. And I'm going to live the rest of my life proving that. Most people, when they drink, they feel a little kind of queasy and a little silly, and then they stop. But for me, that's what happened. Want more and more and more and more. You start partying with your friends, but you notice that your friends stop and switch to coffee at 11 o'clock at night. Or maybe your friend goes, no, you know what, I've had enough, I'm gonna have a glass of water. But you, you don't stop. I was the last girl at the bar going, come on, let's have Zambuca shots at this point. I didn't know what an end was. An end was me just going to bed. And yeah. so that's not normal. My relationship with alcohol was different from that of my peers because I would be the last person to leave I was immediately sneaking drinks. I was the one who was throwing up and blacking out when everyone else knew what time it was to go home. And it, 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 there was nothing really sexy or romantic or rock and roll about it. It was just really kind of sad and pathetic to the point where at the end I was alone, alienated from my friends. My family didn't want anything to do with me until I sorted this out. Just a brief lesson in alcoholism for you guys that don't know and addiction, of course. Um, it, it's a disease, that's the first thing I didn't know. In 1956, I think the American Medical Association said it was a disease. And um, it's a two-pronged disease. Two things happen to me and 10 million other people in the United States. If the, it's an obsession of your mind. Feel nothing, feel nothing, um, except deep, deep grief and the obsession to get more. So I think that's the hardest part about the disease of addiction is this pull, is the compulsion and the obsession for more, yet knowing that more is the thing that is leading to depression, the rock bottom, the not wanting to be here anymore. And then there's an allergy to your body, which means once you've put in the martini your body basically goes okay now give me everything you did last time and more there's two problems there's severe addiction and whatever comes with that the neurobiological consequences the and all the everything that comes with addiction and then there's the trauma so you know you can't still holding on to oh sure it's in their body it's it's embedded <clears throat> yeah. in them it's not it just doesn't it's fixed it's a fixed phenomenon mm. once somebody's been traumatized and, and but that trauma can't really be treated until the addiction is well in hand. You can't start treating the trauma straight off the top. First of all, they can't access it. And secondly, it just fuels the addiction. It has nothing to do with weakness. It's a disease that we have, and we don't know that we have it. And if somebody says, just stop, you know, you want to punch them in the face. You know, for so many of us, I think that there's this notion of just stop. Why don't they just stop? Just stopping doesn't work. There needs to be a support system. There needs for, for the addict. We need 12-step meetings. We need therapy. We need, you know, to evaluate our mental health. We need to work the steps. We need a sponsor. We need a community of people that share our very same struggles so we can see ourselves and experience the therapeutic value of one addict helping another. That is our piece. But until we get there, just stopping is almost impossible. He turned me around and said, just remember, it's not your fault. And I went, what? He said, it's not your fault. And I went, say that again. It's not your fault. And I said, what do you mean it's not my fault? I'm the one who's doing it, what do you mean? And he explained addiction and alcohol to me and he saved my life. You have to eliminate that from your thought process because the people who've gone through addiction, this is not a choice. Nobody is asked for this to happen. This is not his fault. So let's start there and start with love and support and say, look, I want to help you. And what most people do is say, why can't you just stop? Well, ask somebody, why can't you stop breathing? 
When you have a compulsive disorder of the brain, it's not logical. Why would I put a poison into my body that is ruining my life? That's not logical. So to tell me to stop is not, doesn't make sense. Clearly there's something wrong with my brain. Sure. Yeah. I've learned this compulsive disorder. I can't drink because if I drink, I can't stop. Um, so I've gone to AA for a long period of time. And, you know, a lot of people have said to me, if hard work and muscling it in would get you sober, you would have been sober 20 years ago. Um, because I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried. Um, but it's ultimately some kind of spiritual connection that you, you need to have some kind of faith in. Oftentimes it's a destructive pattern, whether it was sex or with drugs or, you know, whatever, um, of trading in what I truly wanted, what I truly believed to be the truth. Because my truth is that I am the best version of myself when I am clear. You know, I choose to call it God, but that God presence, that being is, is absolutely moving through, through me. I've never been able to feel that um, without a spiritual practice. Music has always been a spiritual practice for me, but I think that it's made me who I am. I've made tons of mistakes. And since I've been famous, I made tons of mistakes that were, that were, you know, influenced by the drugs that I was doing or, you know, the, the positions that I got myself in, but those also turned into learning moments that turned into maybe a song or maybe a conversation or maybe the thing that I needed to share about in a 12 step meeting that saved someone's life. I don't know. I don't know, but I know that um, I'm here. I know that I'm here for a reason. And it took over decades of my life. And I pray to you, if you worry that you're having this problem, or you know somebody that is, raise your hand, find somebody who's smarter than you about this and talk to them and be honest about it because the secrets are what kill us. If you're struggling with some kind of addiction, like I was, it's not easy to say that, but I wanted to change. I just didn't know how. Then I had to find a way to fill myself up with other things that could replace the habits that I had. And 24 hours turned into one day, turned into two days, three days, four days, five days. And soon enough, soon enough, I started building a new habit and a new lifestyle. One person, all it takes is one person to break the curse of any family.